He said he wouldn't do it, but it's been done. Motion Blue version 6 and OMG, this thing has got it all. It's everything we've been asking for, but I've been asking for, the community's been asking for. Let's go ahead and show you how to set this up, and then I'll share my final thoughts on it. All right, so I just wanted to show that what I did so far is I downloaded Motion Blue version 6.img. I clicked this little folder right here, went on my hard drive where I have this particular image download, clicked on my micro SD card, made sure the right drive was selected on my micro SD card. I like to format with um, SD formatter, so I did run this program first actually, which is SD formatter version 4. Find your SD card, hit format, leave all the options the same. Once I had it formatted, I went to this step with the Win32 disk imager, found the image on my hard drive, found the correct SD card that I want to write it to, and then I hit write, and then I'm going to say yes. As you see here, it's not too big of a file, so this shouldn't take much time at all. And now I'm just writing it to the uh, SD card. I'm writing this to a 200 gigabyte SD card because I want to build one hell of an image here, and in order to do that, I need a lot of space. So once this is done, we're going to take it out of the computer and put it in our Raspberry Pi 3, and then we're gonna boot it up for the first time. All right, we just booted up for the first time. There seems to be some music on here. But something that I'm gonna love about this whole build is scripts, scripts, scripts. Everything is uh, nicely configured for us. So we do background music, for example. Let me switch my keyboard over here. I think we need to restart. If you are gonna connect through Wi-Fi, go ahead and hit Wi-Fi on this menu, type in your password and get your Pi on the Wi-Fi. Otherwise, I recommend that you just plug a LAN cable into your Pi to get it on your network, and then we're gonna go switch back over to your computer. All right, now we're gonna to go to our network on one side, and RetroPi BIOS. So, we got all our BIOS here, home, Pi, RetroPi BIOS. I'm gonna go ahead and transfer all these over. It's about 400 megabytes. Get that over there. Um, after we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and start doing some ROMs. And uh, within our ROMs, we already have the box art, so Atari 2600, we got our box art, card art, flywheel, marquee, snap, and wheel art already ready. So what we would do there is just match that up to the same ones on RetroPie. So I'm going to do this for all the different systems that I want. Uh, ZX Spectrum, Z Machine, uh, X6800 Sharp, WonderSwan, WonderSwan Color, Virtual Boy, Video Pack. Uh, TurboGrafx-16 and CD, SuperGrafx, SNES, SNES CD, Sega CD, Sega 32X. We got Scum VM. Look at all that good Scum VM right there. Um, Sega Saturn, we're not going to do. PlayStation, I have over 1,600 games. So I'm probably not going to put all those on there. Um, and, uh, you know, get this all squared away. Uh, Dreamcast, I'll probably throw a few Dreamcasts on there. Why not? And uh, But other than that, we're going to throw everything else on there. We're going to do it. We're going to go big or go home here. So as far as where to get the BIOS and the ROMs, Arcade Punks have it, as well as some many other websites out there have them. Um, I'm sure people in the comment section below will link to those. Um, I can't, unfortunately, put the links in the description, but they're fairly easy to find, and then once you have them, it's just a copy and paste, as you're seeing me do in this video right now. We're going to do all these. We're going to skip Jaguar, Atari ST. There's two gigs here for that. Might as well. Daphne, 10 gigs. Coico small. Let's start here. Copy. Copy. 
Okay, we're doing 13 gigs over the network so at two megabytes per second. Uh, we're, we're speeding up here. Nice, 11. Cool. So we're gonna let that go, and this is gonna take some time. Oh, slowing down. So this will take a little bit of time. For this part, you do need to set up your Rycast controls if you're gonna be playing Dreamcast. So that's what I'm doing in this part. You can skip this step if you're not adding Dreamcast games. All right, here we are. I think we just got about got all the games I wanted on here. Um, 200 gigabyte. I still have about 18 gigs left. Um, I did dump the entire Nintendo DS collection on here. I can get rid of some. Uh, as well as on my PSP. And this DOS, did I get any games? No, I didn't do DOS games. Um, but PlayStation, I didn't do that many either. Only nine. I could fit a ton more games there. And then Sega CD, I did put the whole collection on there. But when it came to Dreamcast as well, I did not put all of them. I only put a few. <laughs> Ten games. <clears throat> Alright, we got a we have a gaming keyboard. We want zero. Come on. We want a zero and okay. Yes. Select. Do you want to map A button? Yes. Enter. So A, we want to put where the B is on our controller. C. No, we don't want a C button. Do you want a D button? No. Yes, we want an X button. Yes, we want a Y button. Uh, Z. No, I don't think we need a Z. No. Start. Yes. D pad one. Left button on the D pad. Up. D-pad 2, no, I want to do an analog though. Yes. All right, we did it. So our Rycast is all set up now. Let's go ahead and reboot really quick. All right, so let's check out these launching screens right now. <clears throat> and the bezels. Okay, so there's the motion blue loading screen. And the motion blue bezels, because we're on bezel pack one. So fairly simple. At least it's all a consistent theme. So let's go ahead and I want to do bezel pack two. So bezel pack one is motion blue. Bezel pack two is going to be the consoles themselves. And then bezel pack three is um, just the name, just the name of the system or what you're running on the side. The optional bezel packs that I installed on that same menu are um, this optional game console game bezels. Is for arcade games, you'll notice that they have custom bezels per game. So let's go ahead and check those out really quick. Okay. So here's one of those custom those custom bezels. See, it's a it's a game specific bezel you know where if we go to 1943 we should see a custom bezel not just a final burn alpha bezel so that was from enable console bezels that little optional thing nice so i really like it for especially with vertical games like this looks amazing really nice stuff
So for this next part, I installed bezel pack number two, and I also changed my launch screen from motion blue to the clean look. And so you can see with the entire game here, what not only the launching screen looks like, but the new bezel. So let's see, show me the money here. Okay, cool. So that time we have... Okay, that's working. Okay. You can add collections really easily as well. What this will do is um, you can have like a CPS1 collection, CPS2 collection, uh, Midway collection, all your Midway games, all your Sega Classics, Disney. Uh, let's do a Metal Slug collection. And so for example, this is gonna go through and find all my Metal Slug games and then add a collection to my main wheel, my main emulation station experience. Okay, oh, I think you gotta go over here, game collection settings. You gotta add it there. All right, so now we added it. Just gonna take a second to populate. Okay, there it is. Now we have our Metal Slug collection. We have the Neo, the Neo Geo Pocket version, Neo Geo Pocket version two, Final Burn Alpha version. All right, here we are in Emulation Station. And uh, I transferred over all my games, so now I have you know Family Computer Disk System, Final Burn Alpha. I got 1,500 of those games. Game Gear, I have all of them. I have 332. When I click in, I have not only the game game art, and then it goes into the video snap, game art, video snap. That easy. And go back, and now I'm back in. I set up my Dreamcast controls, so Dreamcast should be running just fine now. I get past that first screen and that'll work. And I uh, wanted to show you some of these rest of these scripts. So we check, we turned off the background music to start off this video. It's very easy to enable and disable that. There is a, uh, a folder in your ROMs directory called music. That's where you wanna drag and drop music if you do wanna add your own music. Emulation station collections, we added one collection so far. We clicked in here, we added a Metal Slug collection, but you can do like a Donkey Kong collection, a Mario collection, anything you want. The emulation station games, look, games list utility is easy to add and remove games from certain systems. Emulation station themes, uh, we've already done this before. This is on every RetroPie image, so this is nothing new, but you just go in here to download new themes. And then as you can see here, I have Hursty Blue, I downloaded Magazine Madness. I have a couple other uh, new themes as well. But again, we're just, we're just using Hursty Blue for the time being. But that's where you would download new themes for emulation station is in there. File manager is standard. GPIO shutdown utility. I believe it's either pin five and six or six and seven. This is to do a safe shutdown on like the Kantaru case and some of the other cases that have a uh, on off button on them. Launching screens has to do with like the boot, the screens that show when you launch a game. This is actually a really cool utility because it comes pre-installed with a bunch of different options. I can, um, go ahead and uh, install launching screens. I already have Clean Look, Comic Book, Hursty Blue, Motion Blue. And I'm currently using Clean Look, um, so I'm done there and I have my Clean Look. We'll check out those in a little, little bit. Media Removal Utility, if you wanna remove any media uh, that you're not gonna be using. Raspberry Pi configs on everything. Retro Arc, Retro Arc, this is on every Retro Pi image. Retro Pi References. Cool, so this utility provides common information about RetroPie, including information about emulation station, track mode, RetroArc, and ROM installation. There's a quick reference for things, cool. So we want information on emulation station, for example. Wow, so really cool, some really basic information on, uh, on each little setting. A lot of people ask me questions like this, and there you go, there's how to save a game, exit a game when you're in a game, uh, change your save state slot, very, very, very helpful. Um, and then if you want information like on Atari 2600 and getting games, it'll probably tell you what kind of file types you need, things like that. Yeah, exactly. So the system, where can you put the ROMs when you finally find them? What's the default emulator? What, if any, BIOS files do you need? And what are some of the ROM extensions? What are some of the file types that'll work for that particular emulator? So really cool to see a little uh, help section here called RetroPie Reference. RetroPie setups, same, run configuration, same, show IP, same, splash screen, so that's gonna be your, your boot up screens. And then switch Genesis to Mega Drive, one of my favorite scripts, such an easy script, 
but I love it. And what it does is it'll switch it from saying Sega Mega Drive to saying Sega Genesis. And you can see I've already done it on this image here because mine says, where are you? Did I, did I pass it? There it is. Mine says Sega Genesis, even though Mega Drive the Japan will always be Mega Drive. But my Genesis is the US version instead of the UK version. Little easy to do thing, really cool. And then lastly, switch to a track mode. So there you have it. We now have our emulation station all set up. And let's go ahead and switch over to a track mode. Once I hit the switch to a track mode, my Pi is now default boot into a track mode as well, meaning if I shut down from a track mode, it boots back up to track mode. If I wanna switch that back to emulation station, all I have to do is click boot into emulation station from a track mode, and now emulation station is my default boot. All right, here we are in a track mode. And uh, to get to a track mode setup, you would just hit start on your controller. That's where you can change your controls for track mode if you need to. Uh, by default, your A button is forward, your X button is back. And as you can see, it doesn't say a track mode setup, instead it says retro pie. So it kind of keeps the, the, the systems the same between emulation station and track mode, it just makes it really simple. So as you can see, ton of scripts here for you. Show IP address, shut down the pie, change your splash screen, system information, up, uh, connect to your Wi-Fi or a different Wi-Fi network, a track mode system utility, really cool. A track mode system wheels, customization, the track mode theme you want, your audio, audio settings between 3.5 and HDMI, background music script here in a track mode, not just emulation station, Bluetooth, that's pretty standard, configuration editor, pretty standard, display utility, this is really cool, to change between whether you wanna show collections or not, whether you want a nested uh, type of file system or whether you want an unnested version of your file system. Favorites utility, add or remove favorites, file manager is pretty standard, GPIO shutdown script, launching screens, media removal, Raspberry Pi configure standard, reboot your Pi, go back to emulation station, do a net play, RetroPie reference, brand new for this uh, Motion Blue 6, and then RetroPie setup. Pretty dang cool. And as you can see here, the main thing you want to do is it's, a, uh, it's the opposite of previous versions of this and other track mode. Uh, what it does is, what am I looking for? Display utility. Here you go, display utility. And what this does is you need to um, enable certain systems. So I'm doing a nested system, and basically you need to tell it what you want it to show. So for handhelds, for example, I want Atari Lynx. Okay, I want it shown, so I'm, I'm adding it. Back to handhelds, I want Nintendo DS. And then back to handhelds, I want... Uh, we don't have any PSPs. I think we have PSP minis. Let's do PSP minis. And let's do uh, Game Boy Advanced, okay? And so now let's exit, exit, and now we should have those in handhelds. Basically, you want to enable what you want to be shown. So now when we go back, and we now go to handhelds, we have Atari Lynx, Nintendo DS, Game Boy Advanced, Minis, and Lynx. These are the only ones we added. We never told it to add Virtual Boy, even though I have Virtual Boy ROMs on this image. So you just need to tell it what you want. So we can go into Nintendo DS, and here are our photos. I'm missing one photo there. Dang it. Okay, so really, really cool looking though. I like that Nintendo DS, it's a vertical video snap. And you can see here that it's more of a horizontal 4-3 uh, ratio type of uh, video snap. All right, so there you have it. Motion Blue version six. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. I love it for both the emulation station and the attract mode. This is something where I think the emulation station and the attract mode experience is superior to the stock RetroPie that you can download from the RetroPie homepage because of all those additional scripts on the Raspberry Pi RetroPie setup. Uh, amazing. The bezel packs, the GPIO shutdowns, the switch to a Genesis, the background music, all the scripts you possibly want. I would say 90% of people, what they would possibly want on 
your front end emulation station all the way here collections themes all that stuff it's gorgeous I just love it look at all these extra scripts then when you go into a track mode as we showed you easy 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 to customize and make your own a track mode experience the fact that the track mode setup also known as RetroPie setup in this particular image has all these same scripts that you can get to an emulation station on a track mode and what that means is that a track mode is not intimidating to the average user so now whether you like a track mode whether you like emulation station this base image is going to satisfy maybe even exceed your expectations as far as what you're trying to do create the ultimate image it's much faster than motion blue 5 that was one of my gripes with motion blue 5 was it took a really long time to boot up and I had mentioned this to David Marty the creator by the way shout out to David Marty that he that was a little laggy and he's like yeah I know we found out we fixed it so really good on that it's much quicker to boot this is by far my favorite front end for the Raspberry Pi 3 by far by far by far this was just blown my expectations out of the water the attract mode you can customize it with those themes and those custom wheels to make it look like any of these other track modes you've seen out there whether you want the nested attract mode or just the standard system only attract mode you have all that customization at your fingertips which out without going to any command line whatsoever did you hear me when I said that no command line or terminal whatsoever I am just blown away by this I don't everything I've been asking for is finally on this image um, my one gripe which which is actually not a gripe because I complained about this to begin with was that in a track mode you have to enable all those menus which can be a little bit of a drag if you have over 40 systems you know to go in there 40 systems and then you want to add collections another let's say 20 or 30 file so if you do want that ultimate track mode you know it's a lot of just going back and forth but evidently he has an updated script now where it should stay on that screen so it should be a lot easier um, and that's just because I'm lazy occasionally you know having all the systems and game art collection there for you is just you know plug and play you're good to go I just think that this has been the most newbie focused image and an image that was focused around what people have been saying on the forums and things like that so it's just so cool when somebody listens and makes those changes now something this doesn't have is it doesn't have those different views like the grid view the uh, horizontal view the vertical view like hyperpi has that's something that hyperpi has that this does not have so there's still going to be some other images out there for you people that want certain features things like that but back to what I was saying with the scripts the easiness the newbie ready I gotta give this an A A plus even A plus region let me know what you guys think don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one